uh, today we're going to be talking about making your facilities uh, safer and more secure and more efficiently operated using uh, our Nyquist IP communication systems. Um, my name is Scott Whipple. I'm the regional sales manager for Bogan. Uh, I handle uh, a large swath of the Midwest. And uh, with me is Scott Hepler, who Hello. is our uh, national training manager. I'm sorry, Scott, you were going to say something? Yeah, I was just saying hello. That's all. <laughs> all right. So um, we'll have a Q&A session at the end. So um, we will get on with it. Just a short overview of who Bogan is. Uh, Bogan Communications started off in 1932 in New York City as the David Bogan Company and um, started off uh, making a lot of different electronic products, uh, UHF, VHF, television, tuning equipment. Um, but uh, at that point, you probably couldn't call it hi-fi, but sort of high-end home music reproduction systems, record players, et cetera. Um, the company gradually evolved into uh, commercial and uh, residential sound systems, intercom systems, et cetera. Uh, Bogan's been a, a market leader in the commercial uh, sector for years and years and years. Uh, we're going to be celebrating our 90th year uh, next year. And uh, our uh, original headquarters that you see up there in the upper left of the photos, that uh, that was Bogan's first uh, major headquarters building in New York. Uh, we've now actually split up into three distinct physical locations. Our um, administrative and financial Operations are uh, are still being handled out of uh, Mawa, New Jersey. We were in Ramsey previous to that. Uh, those functions moved uh, to Mawa, and um, our distribution, assembly, R and D, uh, engineering, um, some of our uh, design services, etc. Uh, had been moved uh, to Orlando, Florida in 2015. That's on the bottom right there. And then uh, in uh, Memphis is uh, is our shipping and warehousing um, and assembly, et cetera. So uh, if you call Bogan, depending on who you're talking to, uh, you might be uh, look, looking at one of three different locations as far as uh, where that person is located. Uh, one interesting little tidbit of history that I like to throw in, being a Beatles fan, the, uh, the famous Beatles concert in 1965 at Shea Stadium in New York, uh, the PA for that concert was actually powered by Bogan Power Amps. I think, unfortunately, throughout most of that uh, concert, the people screaming in the stands were louder than the PA system. Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about why do you need paging and intercom, some of the key applications. Uh, some of these are obvious. This is a Captain Obvious moment here, the first point. Paging, locating employees or customers, uh, background music. Uh, this is actually becoming more and more prevalent uh, in not only retail and office and medical environments, et cetera. But um, as the years go by, I'm getting more and more requests for unified uh, music in industrial applications. Uh, there's a lot of situations where uh, over the years, people have brought in their own portable stereos and you've got six different kinds of music blasting in a, in a pretty small space. Uh, so a lot of companies are looking to unify that and, uh, and have background music in, in an industrial environment. 
Uh, public announcements, which can be very important. Um, a lot of this goes on in uh, hospitals and other types of facilities, uh, just uh, telling you where you can park, et cetera. Uh, live and pre recorded facility wide safety messages. This is a big deal, obviously, these days fire, weather, security, medical, uh, et cetera. And we have also added visual paging uh, to our capabilities with our systems. Why would you want to go with IP-based paging? Uh, it's scalable to virtually any size system, uh, which is obviously perfect for mass notification applications. Uh, we can go from a single building to an entire campus to buildings all over the country or all over the world. Um, it allows you to leverage your existing LAN and WAN. The, the systems are extremely feature rich. You can mix and match the right features for your application. Uh, On-premise installation to reduce reliance on WAN stability. So we, we encourage our customers to have uh, a system controller in each facility so that if your WAN would go down or something would happen with an internet connection, uh, your local system is still up and in operation. Uh, we also have uh, visual paging alerts with the NQ GA10 PV that's uh, connected to uh, an HDMI display. And here we'll have a little example of what this can look like. Uh, those screens can be set up in any of six different formats. Um, these would be great in classrooms to literally take the place of a synchronized uh, clock system in your classrooms. If you're uh, from a K-12 school environment, you can have uh, an analog clock with a single column of uh, messages on the right. Also shows you the date and the, the school period. You can also have the screen set up so you have a, a digital clock at the top that shows you also the date and the and the class period and uh, a single column of messaging below and then a couple of other uh, setups dual column three column two horizontal column and then we also have a full screen now any of these uh, setups uh, can be mixed and matched with uh, digital files that can uh, can show graphics. So if you want to have a special full screen thing for lockdown, you could have that. You can have a, a, a tornado graphic or something like that come up on this screen. Uh, these messages that are on here can be entered manually. You can cut and paste. Uh, you can put these in ahead of time and set them up as timed events. So the messages can change automatically or manually, uh, however you want to set that up. Some additional advantages of going with an IP-based system. Um, new features continue to be added to these systems constantly. Um, our E7000 system, which is uh, our uh, K12 oriented uh, IP intercom platform, uh, it's been on the market for about three and a half years and we're already on version six of the software. So there is a lot of continuing development on the system. So as new needs come up, we can address that and um, keep adding to the system without having to change out any of the 
uh, hardware appliances, etc. You can adjust all your system parameters via a web-based UI. Uh, you'll see a picture of the dashboard here in a little bit that uh, give you some idea of what we're looking at there. You can adjust the volume levels of remote devices um, and also for different priority pages. So you can have uh, low level background music, a uh, normal level for paging and a louder level for emergency all call and emergency announcements, just to give you one example there. Uh, this offers seamless integration into existing infrastructure. A lot of our systems have gone in facilities that already have analog 25 volt speakers and cabling in place that are still uh, perfectly useful. So we can seamlessly integrate with those legacy situations for the analog wiring we can uh, interface with the existing PBX or IPBX, whatever the case may be with the phone system. And uh, along with that, uh, the system allows for you in, uh, especially in new installations, we can locate our uh, analog station bridge appliances uh, remotely in your technology closets so that you can greatly cut down the uh, the amount of cabling going to the speakers. And uh, that's true with our C4000 commercial system as well as the E7000 educational system. And independent network operation capability. This uh, What this means is that you can set the system up on its own network switch and it can operate as its own entity that is then uh, connected through one gateway through through the customer customer uh, network i'm going to hand it over to uh, scott at this point and he's going to talk to you a little bit all right. Uh, well, thank you everybody for uh, for attending. And Scott, thank you for uh, the quick introduction there. Um, I've got a few slides that I'm going to talk with you, and Scott's going to continue to drive the slide presentation. So, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of start getting a little bit into the nitty gritty features and functions. But before we do that, I do want to kind of reinforce a couple things that that Scott had mentioned uh, on that last presentation about us being at version six, uh, even though we've only had the product out in the market for about three and a half years. Um, that version six that was just released in February had over 70 new features uh, and enhancements in it, which is, uh, uh, there's a lot of things that went into that last build or that last version number. So there's, we're constantly evolving to uh, to meet the customer's needs, and uh, and there's there's a a great mechanism that we have in place with our regional sales managers that allow them to provide the engineering staff with input on direction on how the features should be for each one of these releases that come out. So if there's ever something that you think the system needs, uh, you can always get in touch with your regional sales manager with Mr. Whipple. Uh, and let them know that, hey, we'd love to have this feature in the system and I just don't see it. And, uh, and he can help you provide, uh, he can uh, provide that feedback to us and we can bring it into the system as what we call a story and then uh, potentially bring it out in a future release of the software. So uh, the software releases up until this last one, unfortunately because of last year's pandemic, um, was delayed a little bit on its release, but uh, it was out, I think about a year late. It, we did a one year uh, development cycle instead of the normal six month development cycles. And we're gonna start getting back into hopefully six or nine month development cycles. So every six or nine months, you're gonna see a new release of the software that's gonna come out. The other thing that I wanna mention is uh, about the ASBs that Scott mentioned uh, on the E7000 system allows us to easily connect to uh, existing wiring and 25 volt speakers that you have in the facility. The use of the ASBs make the systems, make the IP based systems very comparable in price 
to an analog intercom system. So, and in some cases, depending upon the layout of the facility, it may be less expensive to put in an IP-based intercom system with analog station bridges. So it's a matter of taking the time to look at the layout of the facility and deciding where to go with that. So this obviously isn't a discussion about pricing, it's more about the, the solution. So with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and talk about the connected paging and intercom systems, uh, starting with a look at what the dashboard looks like on our, uh, on our uh, e C4000 system, which is the commercial version that Mr. Whipple mentioned earlier. Uh, and in this case, we're just showing a, uh, what we call our mapping feature, uh, which is an option in the system. And it allows us in this latest version of software in the 6.0, or actually in C4000, it's called 3.0 software. In this release of software, we now have uh, the ability to combine multiple facilities together on our map. And if you're looking at that map, this happens to be a transit system. So it's a, just a fictitious uh, system called Bay City Transit. And what we're doing is basically saying we've got a couple of different uh, transit lines. There's an orange line, a red line, a yellow line, and a green line. Over on the left-hand side of the, the on the left-hand side of the dashboard, you can actually click on the green, the, the orange, the red, or the yellow, and instantly page to all of those facilities by a button that was created by the technician to page those facilities. Uh, and we also have the ability to do on-the-fly paging, which means that we can literally click on a couple of those facilities. You can see dark circles on the lighter colored stuff and white circles on the darker colored ones, but we can click those, select a group of stations, or in this case, stations, we're, we're talking about, oh, what happened to Mr. Whipple? Did we lose Mr. Whipple? I think I'm gonna have to share. You, uh, Scott, if you have happen to have that presentation, I think his, uh, his signal was pretty weak. Let me see what I have to do to do that. What do I have to do? Start sharing. Uh, so if you open up that presentation, yep, and start sharing down there. Uh, I'm going to share a screen. I'm going to share this screen. And then hopefully you'll see it. It's behind a few slides, but all right. Are you able to see? Uh, my presentation now? Yep, we got you. Okay, because it looks blank on my side. Mm. Just nope, we have, yeah. Yep, we have the screen there. Okay, all right. Um, oh, it's just lagging. I see what's going on now. All right, so the uh, the transportation screen that you guys can see here, the, the C4000 software, I can select a group of these stations. So I could literally click on these a couple of these oranges, a couple of reds, and maybe the white and the green. And then I can click on the page selected stations button. And this is all a part of the new 3.0 software for C4000 that enables us or gives us the ability to do that. The next slide that I wanna show you is the educational system using the same similar mapping feature capabilities for an E7000 system uh, where we can have um, Oh, the video is really lagging behind me. I'm looking at two screens and it's throwing me off. Where we can have uh, a similar setup like I just showed you with the transit system. We could have the Bay City School District uh, and set up in a similar fashion where I've taken the elementary schools and made them all blue. Middle schools are orange. Uh, high schools are green. Where I could individually page just elementaries or middles or high schools or I can do selection of stations uh, to be able to individually page one or multiple stations on the fly. This new software also gives us the ability to play pre-recorded messages that you have uh, in each one of the facilities uh, from, a, from an admin type uh, setup like we have here, like we're showing here. So there's a button at the top of that screen. Might not be real easy to see, but that's our lockdown selected schools button or an emergency page to all schools. We can, uh, we can configure additional map buttons on these. We can also drill down into each one of these buttons and look at the actual floor plan of each one of the schools if we need to. So there's a lot that can be placed or gone, a lot can go into this, uh, into this new mapping feature, new mapping capabilities that we have in the system. This isn't, this isn't the first time we've had maps in the system. This just happens to be the first time we've 
uh, expand it on to more of a facility to be able to combine more than one facility together. Our next thing, uh, next screen that I'm going to show you is the uh, just a, a static shot of our, uh, our other part of our dashboard, <clears throat> which is where uh, the dashboard is one of the first things that was in the system when uh, when um, when when NyQuest was introduced back there in version one. We had a dashboard, and the great part about this dashboard is it works on uh, it works on all of uh, all of your uh, PCs, whether they're uh, a Macintosh PC or a Windows PC or a Linux PC, running the Chrome operating system, um, you are able to use the dashboard to be able to make or send and receive or make and receive calls right from the dashboard without having to have any additional uh, plugins loaded into your computer. It uses what's called WebRTC. So it uses the technology that's already in the Chrome browser to be able to communicate with the classroom. So you can, of course, still have an admin phone sitting on the desk in the office, but if you wanna use the map to be able to click on a classroom and talk to a classroom right from the computer, you can do that. And these buttons basically are showing that, <clears throat> you know, you can hit the directory, find a classroom and have a conversation with them. You could initiate an emergency all call. Uh, you can look at the schedule. If you were to scroll down a little bit further on this page, we could look at the current schedule that's active in the facility, uh, manually initiate tones or alarm tones in the system, and even run our new uh, check-in feature that we have, which can be used in a lockdown scenario. So the next thing that I wanna kind of start to touch on is just the whole architecture that exists. So, so Scott mentioned that it leverages your existing LAN and WAN. So to start, the LAN is where we kind of focus uh initially that's where that's where it was all built was based on our land and then we started to incorporate more and more of the district stuff later on but you can have multiple buildings where these uh any of these components that we're showing here which we don't even show all of the components that are available in the district or in the uh in a facility on this sheet but this just kind of shows us some of our basic stuff where we can have a pc connected uh you can have an android operating system or windows operating system phone uh, we can have our admin display telephones, which is a color touch display, um, our system controller, which is the driver, the, the brain on the system. And these things can hang anywhere off from the customer's network if you choose to do that, or they can be even on their own closed network if, if you don't want to, uh, if you don't want to have to worry about managing these components on the existing network, they can also be ran on their own, uh, dedicated network. And it's quite easy to do with the new 6.0 software on E7000 because we've deployed a new DHCP option where we can actually have DHCP active on one of the network ports on the system controller. So it takes care of all the NyQuest appliances, such as your phones, your analog station bridges, IO controllers, those kinds of things. And then the other network port on the system controller can then be plugged into the customer's network. So the customer's network or the school district's network sees one point and we take it managing all the other points. So it makes it a simple interface at that point. Um, and of course that would, you know, that the system does allow for you to deploy it over the network, which could save in cabling costs if you're designing a brand new facility or if you have problematic uh, wiring that's in the ground that has failed because it's been in the ground for 50 years and you need to be able to either replace that cabling in the ground or put something in each one of the buildings to be able to handle that. And that's where these analog station bridges or uh, the amplifiers or even IP endpoints can become a value in those regards. So you may have an outbuilding in, at a facility that doesn't have uh, any traditional intercom wiring to them where you could easily put either a, a, an IP speaker or one of our PoE plenum rated intercom modules and make a analog speaker into an IP speaker. So we can, uh, as long as we have a network connection uh, and that network connection is a part of the NyQuest local area network, then we can easily uh, add any kind of an IP point anywhere on the facility. We do recommend that, like Scott mentioned, that we keep the stuff on premise, meaning you don't wanna have one system controller talking with an appliance, meaning like an analog station bridge that's at another geographic location in the school district, because if something were to happen to that internet connection, that appliance is gonna stop talking with the system controller. So you wanna keep it on premise when it comes to that. 
So this is just kind of a sampling of the components that can be a part of the E7000 system. And I highly recommend that you take the time to look at some of the other components that we have. In a nutshell, uh, these are kind of the most commonly used ones that we have in schools, uh, starting with our system controller. Uh, wait, I guess I didn't put the system controller on this one. Of course, we have the system controller, which is your brain of your system. And then uh, we have a color touch display telephone down here in the lower left-hand corner of your screen, uh, just to the uh, going clockwise around that circle, there's an IO controller that can be used to uh, initiate something called routines in our system or be used to manually trigger a bell. Uh, it's got eight inputs and eight outputs. Uh, just going counterclockwise from there is our MMPA, uh, and the MMPA allows us to bring analog audio sources into the system for any kind of legacy audio uh, devices that a school may have, CD player, AM, FM tuner, uh, MP3 player, that kind of a device can be plugged into that. We can also take MP3s directly into the system and MP3 can be put on, MP3s can be put onto a memory stick plugged into the system controller and it automatically creates a playlist that can be used within the system. Then we have an IP speaker, uh, which is just a traditional uh, ceiling mounted IP speaker. There's also a wall baffle version of this. Uh, and then our next device from that is amplifiers. We have two and four channel amplifiers that can be used uh, in the E7000 system that range anywhere from 60 watts per channel up to 300 watts per channel. Uh, so if you have any higher powered things that you need to be able to drive with those, such as uh, some maybe some larger speakers in a gymnasium or in an auditorium, uh, they have also a very, very robust DSP that's built into the amplifiers and also into our matrix mixer preamplifier. Um, then we have our analog station bridge and the analog station bridge is the device that 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 makes us uh, or gives us the ability to connect to that legacy home run intercom cabling that you may have at your facility for a K through 12 applications and uh, that device specifically is only available in the E7000 system. The last component that's in the bottom middle there is what's called a GA10PV. Uh, and it's a V because it has the HDMI output on it. There is also a version that doesn't have the HDMI output. It's just called a GA10P. Uh, those devices are the plenum rated intercom modules that are designed to make any uh, eight ohm speaker into an IP speaker. Uh, and then it can have a analog or digital call switch connected to it or it could have a HDMI display connected to it if it's the V version and allow us to be able to do visual alerting or visual paging within the facility as well. And that can work in conjunction with the other auditable paging that you're doing at a facility. So this, all of these things can be automated together using a new feature that was introduced in the fourth version of our software. I think it was either fourth or third. Uh, and that is something called routines. And routines is a very powerful user definable feature that allows us to um, automatic launch procedures. Uh, and this is just kind of taking this out of our, uh, taking it out of our manual. A routine can automatically launch, launch a procedure or a sequence of actions that the Nyquist system executes as a result of an input trigger or an API interface. So, the idea behind routines is routines have a trigger and then they have an action. And the trigger can be a number, uh, we have probably a hundred different types of triggers we can use within the system, including the last thing that I men mentioned there, which is an API interface that could be either from local or a secured remote uh, API interface that we can use. That can then be a trigger input to the system to activate a set of actions that we want to predefine. So if you were using this as a, uh, let's say your lockdown plan for, or your crisis plan for a lockdown at a school, and you know you have to play a message to notify everybody within the facility, uh, and then you have to put the room, uh, the facility into lockdown, we have this feature called check-in, which allows us to basically look at the floor plan in the map and watch as classrooms actually go from being red, which is when check-in starts, and as they hit their call buttons in their classrooms, those classrooms will start to go green as the teachers complete their lockdown, uh, their lockdown uh, procedures in their classrooms. Uh, at the same time that it's doing the sending out the auditable message that the school is in a lockdown, 
We can also do visual paging to those HDMI devices if we have any of the GA10 PVs in place. We can pop up a screen that says you're in lockdown along with instructions on what to do. Um, and then it will keep track of all the events that are happening in the system as the teachers hit their call buttons in their classroom, which uh, that's how the check-in process works with, a, with check-in. Um, and then as those classrooms go green, hopefully this is just a drill and everybody's goes green within a reasonable amount of time. The system also tracks when the event started and when each one of the rooms actually hit their button to confirm that they were, they were locked down. So if you're using it as a drill uh, to figure out what's going on in the building or how, uh, how efficient the building is, uh, this is a great way to be able to practice and find out what happened uh, after the fact. And of course, it's not just lockdowns. Uh, it can be used for weather events, uh, emergency evacuation. And when it comes to weather events, we also have a, uh, we have an alerting system. It's called, uh, it's part of the National Weather Service. Uh, we can actually initiate alerts within the system uh, based on weather events that happen in your area. And that can be automated just like, uh, just like a lockdown. Wow. I already made it to that. So, Mr. Winter, I believe it. Can you hear me? I can hear you. All right. I apologize uh, when that one slide got stuck. My inter internet connection went kerflooey and I had to sign out and come back in. So, my apologies. I'll, I'll ask you to just keep, sure. keep running the presentation just in case. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, Bogan has a full analog product offering as well as uh, our IP platforms. Uh, pretty much everything that you would need from uh, inexpensive paging level speakers up to uh, pro audio speakers that you could install into uh, sports venues and auditoriums. Uh, and uh, larger event spaces, et cetera. Um, we offer a complete line of master clock systems, uh, synchronized clocks. These can be pretty much any, any format that you would desire from uh, what you see there in the picture, the round analog clocks. We have square analog clocks, uh, digital clocks in many different formats. And these can be synchronized uh, via IP or hardwire or uh, wireless. And our, our wireless clocks are unique in the fact that every clock is actually a transceiver. Uh, the clocks actually form what you might want to call a mesh network, where each clock receives the sync signal and passes that along to any other clocks within range of that clock. So it uh, it keeps uh, building out to the clocks that are furthest away. Um, complete line of telephone paging amplifiers in about every, any flavor you can think of. Speakers and horns for commercial, industrial, institutional uh, applications from factories to small medical offices and everything in between. Um, we can do uh, very high quality in ceiling speakers, pendant speakers, wall mount speakers, etc. cetera. Um, we also offer a full line of extremely high quality all weather residential speakers called uh, NEAR. These are available in a lot of different configurations with uh, available subwoofers and uh, satellite speakers to completely blanket any type of uh, outdoor area, actually, you know, residential or commercial. I think we can move, oh, I didn't also mention, we, uh, we, we still also manufacture uh, analog and hybrid uh, intercom systems. So if, uh, if IP isn't your thing, uh, we still have you covered there as well for uh, uh, K through 12 applications, as well as uh, other situations that require intercom. 
better sound, smarter systems, safer spaces, exceptional service. This is what we're striving to provide for our customers. And the, um, the next slide here just gives you some examples of where our systems have been installed pretty much anywhere that you can think of from residential up to the largest commercial, industrial, medical application, et cetera. Uh, we do a tremendous amount of business in retail, in restaurants, hotels, uh, the healthcare industry in general. Uh, healthcare in particular is going crazy right now with uh, us baby boomers starting to hit retirement age. Uh, there's a large demand for health facilities, anywhere from small clinics all the way up to major new builds for hospitals and additions, et cetera. Um, the town that I live in outside of Columbus, Ohio, has just had uh, construction of a major hospital system uh, right here where I live, which has created kind of a little mini boom uh, here in the town. Um, we work with transportation. We do a ton of work with government. Uh, you see the picture down below there of the Capitol building. Uh, maybe about eight years ago or so, um, we installed a very elaborate touchscreen um, paging system for the entire Capitol complex in Washington, D.C., covering not only the Capitol building, but all of the congressional offices, the Senate office building, et cetera. Uh, and all that's tied together and the Capitol Police are able to operate that with uh, touchscreen interfaces. So safety and building security, that's obviously uh, a major concern right now. Uh, we can use our systems for any type of emergency Broadcast messages, these can be pre-recorded, they can be live, they can be a combination of pre-recorded and live. Um, and uh, again, as we mentioned earlier, uh, we can also add visual messages uh, to that crisis plan as well. And also on that point, Scott, not to step on your toes, but um, when it comes to the emergency broadcasting of messages, uh, all of our IP systems, our E7000 and also the C4000 system has station supervision, meaning that it actually supervises all of the endpoints. So if there is a, if there's a problem with an IP speaker or something wrong with an analog station bridge, then we can actually send out a notification to uh, technicians, you know, local service uh, or somebody at the facility to indicate that there's something wrong with one of those devices on their network. So, that's Absolutely. All supervision. <laughs> all right. So I guess at this point, um, I think the next thing is uh, our Q&A session, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, there's still more, I apologize. One more, a couple more slides, I guess. All right, uh, the support that we offer um, for uh, our customers and for our end users, um, we have uh, local regional sales managers all over the country. Um, we are available for site visits, uh, sales and training uh, sessions, etc. Uh, we offer ACE Bixie accredited uh, paging training classes, which uh, any of you who are Bixi affiliated, uh, either as a technician, an RCDD, pretty much any of their designations, uh, we can uh, we can get you much needed credits for those classes. We can supply connectivity drawings uh, that are project specific. We have an 800 technical support hotline. And we have uh, case studies available on different applications of our products. If, if you can think of a vertical market 
Bogan has had a system installed in that type of facility. So we make available a lot of case studies. Uh, if you uh, if you own a car dealership, for instance, and you want to know if Bogan has done that type of work, we can uh, show you a case study on that. We also offer an online e-learning portal. Uh, this is expanding all the time. We have complete uh, front to back video training on our C4000 and E7000 systems, as well as training on individual products. As those uh, sessions get introduced, it's a constantly evolving uh, content on that portal. Sorry, Scott. In addition, we just came out with our brand new uh, catalog number 111. So we've obviously been churning out catalogs for a while. Uh, this is the brand new version. This is uh, currently available on our brand new uh, website that we're very proud of. Um, we uh, we have a completely new website where all of our product offerings have been unified under one heading and uh, urge you to uh, visit bogan.com if you have not lately. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you for uh, joining us today. We really appreciate it. And uh, we hope you enjoy the rest of your day.